Welcome to Mathematics with M's, Grade 12, DBE 2022, Final Paper 1, Question 4. Don't forget to give me a huge like and to subscribe. Remember, subscription is free. So this is the information or so-called formula sheet. Please take note, this is important that whenever you answer any question, always consult this page to help you to make your problems easier. Question 4.1 Sketch below is the graph of the h of x equals to 1 over x plus p plus q. The asymptotes of h intersect at 1 and 2. Now, of course, it is important for you to recognize this as a hyperbola. Right? It is important. It's a hyperbola. And you must know what is the, the function of p and what is the function of q in the formula. That is important. And that is the first question, 4.11. Write down the values of p and q. And secondly, 4.12, calculate the coordinates of the x-intercept of h. 4.13, write down the x-coordinate of the x-intercepts of g. If the g of x is equal to the h of x plus 3, 4.14, the equation of an axis of symmetry of h is y equals to x plus t, determine the value of t, and 4.1.5, determine the values of x for which the which negative 2 is less than or equals to 1 over x minus 1. So, the values of p and q, now if you see where is p, p is next to x plus p, and that is normally the value of x, of, but with the opposite value. So x, therefore, is then x minus 1. If you look at the horizontal axis of symmetry, it goes through x plus 1, but it's always with the opposite sign, so therefore p negative 1. Plus q, of course, is always the the new asymptote, or the new position of the x asymptote, which, got, which is the line parallel to the x-axis that goes through the point 2. So therefore, q is 2 with the same value. 4.1.2, the coordinates of the x-intercept of h. Now remember, for x-intercept, what do we normally do? So we take the equation, replace p with a minus 2 and q with a plus 2, and then we let the y value be 0. Because remember, on the x-axis, the y value is always 0, and you get a mark for that. Then you can simplify by multiplying with x minus 1, or you can take 2 over and you can cross-multiply, whatever method you prefer, but you will end up with minus 2x plus 2 equals to 1. Then, of course, you must take 2 to the right-hand side, and, of course, you end up with x equals to a half. So there you are. So the coordinates of the x-intercept of h is therefore a half and zero. Right, so the 4.1.3, write down the x-coordinate of g if the g of x is equal to h of x plus 3. Now the g of x is now a new graph, and what does x plus 3 mean? It means the graph shifted. Right, so the solution therefore is then s equals to a half, remember the half from the previous question, half, and then of course negative 3 with the opposite sign, remember now, and simplify with using the calculator and you get minus 5 over 2. 4.12, the equation of an axis of symmetry of h, if y is, is equals to x plus t, determine the value of t. So remember y equals to x plus t. So y, so what you do is you take the point y equals to 2 and x equals to 1 and substitute into the equation 1 and 2. And you get, remember that 1 and 2 was given. The h is the intersect at 1 and 2. And then you get t equals to 1. Then 4.1.5, determine the values of x for which minus 2 is less than or equals to 1 over x minus t. So what you do is then, you transfer 2 to the right hand side. And then of course, you can find that x is less than a half or x is greater than 1. 
or you can rewrite the answer as x an element of negative infinity round brackets to a half square bracket remember you can never include infinity and then the other one a round bracket for one and of course a round bracket for positive infinity Right, let's look at 4.2 now. The graphs of y, the f of s equals to x squared minus 4x minus 5, which of course is a parabola, and the g of x equals to a 2 to the power x plus q, which of course is the exponential graph, are sketched below. E and h are the x-intercepts of f. C is the y-intercept of f and lies on the asymptote of g. The two graphs intersect at d the turning point of f. So you must write down the y coordinate of c, determine the coordinates of d, determine the values of small letter a and q coming from, from the formulas, and of course uh, write down the range of g and determine the values of k for which the value of the f of x minus k will always be positive. So 4.2.1, write down the coordinates of C. Now, if you have a close look, you will realize that C is actually the y-intercept of the parabola. So, this answer you get directly from the formula x squared minus 4x plus 5. So, therefore, the y-intercept is negative 5. 4.2.2, determine the coordinates of D. Now, of course, here you've got different methods. You can use your grade 11 method for x as minus b over 2a. You can use that method, or of course, you can use derivatives, uh, which I will recommend. So you first differentiate x squared minus 4x minus 5, and you get 2x minus 4, and then you know at the turning point, the derivative is 0, so therefore 2x minus 4 is 0, so x is 2. So either way to get 2, and to get the y value, you just substitute x equals to 2 into the original formula, and you get your negative 9. Right, 4.2.3, determine the values of small letter a and q. So what do we do? Remember, it is there in the exponential equation. So small letter q will then be negative 5. So you substitute that negative 5 into the equation, and you get negative 9 equals to a times 2 to the power 2 minus 5. Then you make a the subject, and you get a equals to negative 1. And then substitute the negative 1 into the final formula, and the answer is therefore negative 2 to the power x minus 5. Write down the range of g. Now again, don't, don't confuse range with domain. Range is the y values. So the range of g, now remember which graph is g? g is the exponential graph, and you can see it lies between negative infinity and minus 5, as you know, and of course, or you can say y is less than negative 5. You can choose what method you want to prefer. Remember, that means below negative 5. And then 4.2.5, determine the values of k for which the value of the f of x minus k will always be a positive. It will always be a positive because k is less than negative 9. Right, this is uh, uh, Ahmed Suleiman uh, with Mathematics with Ams. I hope you've liked this video. Please don't forget to give me a huge like and subscribe. Remember, subscription is free.